It's never easy to start a new slot car club. Today we're going to take a look at a fairly new slot car club in the San Francisco Bay Area. Track owner Kenyon is going to tell us the beginnings of the East Bay Slot Car Club. We're here in San Lorenzo, California, and I found this track on YouTube, uh, uh, and we're here with Kenyon, who owns the track. Uh, Kenyon, can you tell us a little bit about the track? Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, this is our third track, and we have a club, and the origin story on this is that at the tail end of COVID, I was tired of watching cat videos and being alone. I'm not a terribly social person. I'm kind of mechanical nerdy, but I thought, well, hey, what if I got a slot car track? Uh, I mentioned it, my wife got me a little figure eight one that was incredibly unsatisfying. And I went on Craigslist with a buddy and we found a hobby shop track that had gone out of business and we bought that and it wasn't enough. So there was a, a hobby shop in the Bay Area that went out of business and they had a, a sale. I went on the last day and said, I'll buy everything for pennies on the dollar. And uh, the guy was reluctant, but his wife said, yes, yes, yes. A week later, I went back and picked everything up. I've got a background with YouTube, so I, or not YouTube, but eBay, and I sold it all and made a really a whole bunch of money, which allowed me to go out and pay retail and buy enough track to have a library. And then every year in springtime, we get together and build it, and it goes for the summer. We cover it with tarps when it's not in use. And so every Saturday or every Sunday, depending on what year we, we decide we're gonna do one day or the other, it's one day a week. And there's, I don't know, about 10 people. Not everybody shows every day uh, that we run, but if you wanna come, you come. And if you don't, you don't, it's hobby. And if nobody shows up, then I just don't take the tarp off. And we tend to take the tarp off every week. So there is this entire 160 foot track. This is shorter. Last year and the year before, we had different setups that were 180 feet. And then if you pan the camera over this way, there is a shipping container where we uh, store everything. I've got it covered in uh, camouflage because I don't want to hear about it from the HOA. I'm sure they'd have a fit if uh, they found out there was a shipping container back here. So this is a Carrera Digital Track and Carrera Digital uh, allows you to assign a controller to a car and that means that you can run more than one car per slot and this track is set up with the maximum which is six uh, controllers so that's six people at a time on the track and you can they say that you can do four we've gotten five ghost cars so six cars controlled by people and five cars that are just automatically running around the track is 11 cars uh, the track is big enough that it works best if there are 10 people, 12 people, six people running cars, and then the other people out at this end who, or the other end that are able to marshal and pick cars up as they be slot. So uh, we are outside. You can see that we've got a cover over. That's the, the trick. These are sales that are I got off of Amazon, and they create enough shade that you don't burn up if you're standing out in the, uh, the outside all day long. Uh, Past that, we've got a library of maybe 30 cars, and we've got a technical person that loves to tune them, so he has redone the back uh, tires. Carrera tires are known to go bad after about a year, so all of the cars have uh, redone tires, and they've been uh, set to the proper ride height, and we're less about out-and-out -out competition and timing than we are about just coming out and having a good time. Looks like a great track, and obviously it's a Carrera Digital, as you said. Yes. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and there's enough going on that it's uh, it's usually a four-hour session every week. And you supply the cars? Sure. If you've got one that you want to bring, you can do that. But the idea is that that uh, good fortune that we had with uh, uh, buying and selling the you, the uh, older stuff at that, that place that went out of business means that it's a club, and uh, money is not an issue. There was enough to buy all of this and buy enough cars. And uh, what happens is people will come and visit, 
and they'll borrow a car. And if they get into it, eh, maybe they go buy you know, their own car or maybe they just come and use one of the club's cars. It doesn't really matter. We're, we're here for social reasons. And uh, so there's no money involved. And it's called East Bay Slot Car Club. Correct. And you have a YouTube channel. What's the YouTube channel? Hmm, I think it's my Imperialist 1960 uh, a channel. Uh, I'll have to give you a link to that that you can post to us. Okay, that, we'll put the link in the description below. Okay. And it's Imperialist 1960 because uh, there's a 1960 Imperial just to the right of us right yeah, now. Yeah, I run the online Imperial Club. If you like cars, you can go to imperialclub.com, and that's a 100,000-page website about Chrysler's luxury flagship car that competed with Cadillac. So that's a specialty that I have that's outside of all of this. I've, I've got some mechanical knowledge with uh, automobiles. Well, great. It's, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And We're glad that you came. And if you're watching the video and are interested in trying this out and you're in the Bay Area or Northern California, we'd love to have you over. You're invited. I want to thank Kenyon again for inviting me to the race and sharing the beginnings of the East Bay Slot Car Club. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Jim Rose with NorCal Slot Car Scene.